G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to World of Warships with Mags and welcome to World of Warships Submarines. For those of you who do not keep up with World of Warships news, World of Warships every year obviously runs a very large and usually very elaborate Halloween event. The first year was a theme of ships based around classic movie monsters escorting a tall ship called the Transylvania through a portal and in the process engaging a boss battleship by the name of the Rasputin. The second year was the follow-on for that, where you would play the Forces of Light, defending the Transylvania as it came through the other side of that portal, and once again beating off the Rasputin and a aircraft carrier monster demon-themed ship called the Great Gorgon. The name Gorgon, of course, being pulled from Greek mythology as one of the three snake-haired sisters of which the most famous was Medusa. This year's Halloween event is called Terror from the Deep, and this time we get to play the Terrors. We are playing as submarines, with a new series of submarine mechanics that, while at this point unconfirmed as becoming part of the core of World of Warships, at the very least has shown that Wargaming are thinking about adding submarine units to the game. Now, I do have to say up front, don't worry about how OP these submarines appear to be, the event itself messes with the range of weapons in game, the amount of damage that weapons do, and the submarines are no different. The torpedoes are devastating even beyond what normal torpedoes would be, including having special power torpedoes, such as the one that is loaded into the three-slot torpedo tube on the sea lever here. It is a frost torpedo that will freeze a target and stop it from moving, while also moving significantly faster than the other standard torpedo options. So this really isn't a good way of judging exactly how powerful a submarine would be in World of Warships because of that, but at the very least it gives you a look at the kind of mechanics that Wargaming are obviously considering. But before we go too deep into that, the basic objectives and layout for this particular mission. Essentially this is an assassination mission. The last two times in the two previous Halloween missions we've managed to push the Rasputin away, but this time we're coming in to kill the Rasputin permanently. The Rasputin is at its port, it's defended by its own ships, it has its own base and its own defences. The objectives are to spot all the defences, the catapults that are mounted on various islands around the map, find the fortress that the Rasputin is supposed to be docking at, sink as many of the ships surrounding us as we possibly can, and locate the Rasputin itself and put it on the bottom forever. Now to do this you have access to five different submarine types. Today I'm driving out the Sea Lover, which is usually the fourth submarine you'll unlock. It's one of the more difficult ones to get access to. It has six forward firing 533 millimeter torpedo tubes, two of which are devoted to the frost torpedoes that I mentioned earlier. The second submarine is the Barracuda, which is significantly larger. Doesn't have as many forward firing torpedo tubes, but does have two deck guns. These are 133mm guns and they function pretty much the same as secondaries on a battleship. The third submarine is the Gerfalcon. It only has three forward firing torpedo tubes and no deck gun, but it does have seven rearward facing torpedo tubes that are slightly off center to the left and right. It's incredibly maneuverable. The idea is you hit a target in front, then turn the submarine around and shoot them to the rear. The fourth is the Zipper Sub. It is a, again, incredibly maneuverable submarine, and it is capable of changing depth extremely rapidly. It's very small, but it only has two forward-firing torpedo tubes. However, these torpedo tubes carry a more powerful version of the Frost Torpedo. It's essentially a crowd control submarine. The fifth submarine is the Killer Whale, which unfortunately I don't have unlocked yet, so I don't have any footage of it, but it is, by all reports, Possibly the most overpowered thing that has ever been added to World of Warships, bar nothing else. It's essentially a reward for those who play a lot of the submarine event to have something that is just stupidly powerful to play around with up until the point that submarines are removed. Now, you might see a couple of the allied torpedoes getting close. There is no friendly fire in the event. It's safe to assume there would be friendly fire in a proper match, but Nothing like that here. And yes, it is really cool to dive underneath torpedoes and other ships and even other submarines in this. I really do enjoy how this functions. So mechanically, how does it actually work? Well, controlling the submarines is actually relatively straightforward. They turn and maneuver in pretty much the same way as any other ship in World of Warships, although they are an odd mix. 
Maneuverability wise, it does depend on the submarine, but they tend to probably be closer to somewhere between, between a destroyer and a cruiser in terms of their turning capability. But they have a rudder shift time that is more akin to a battleship. So it is very easy to overcook a turn past a target and have to readjust, as you see here. It takes me a little bit to bring the nose back so I can actually get the torpedoes lined up. Now, obviously, the torpedo tubes all have fixed arcs and they operate the same as normal torpedo firing inside of warships. Outside of there's a couple of depth options. Now, the depth options are really easy. You have four of them. The top depth is surface. The submarine is completely on the surface. When it's up there, it's very vulnerable. They have relatively low health. They're very easy to set on fire and they die very quickly. But going to the surface is an absolute requirement. To the left-hand side of the depth bar on the just left-hand side of the HUD, you'll notice a small timer that ticks down whenever I'm submerged. This is your airtime. You can only stay submerged for so long before having to go back to the surface. How long you can stay down depends on the submarine. The Zipper, for example, as a small submarine, can only stay submerged for a very small amount of time, but it recharges its air very quickly on the surface. So you only need a couple of seconds on the top before you can dive away again. Other submarines can stay down longer, but they also take a lot longer to recharge that air. So if they run out, they're gonna be stuck on the surface for a while. Now, if you run out of air while you are underwater, you don't die the submarine does an emergency blow and immediately forces you to the surface whether you like it or not. If you're going to be under and be running very low to running out of air, it's best that you try and control where that emergency blow is actually going to happen so you don't die. Now while on the surface your torpedoes do have a noticeably wider potential spread, for the most part they do stay mostly towards the center where you're firing them, but firing from the surface isn't optimal. And of course, when you're on the surface, you have the highest level of detectability. Now, your second level down is periscope depth. At periscope depth, you can still be spotted by surface ships. Your periscopes can be detected, although the range at which you can be detected is significantly smaller. Your torpedoes are far more accurate, but you are consuming air at that level. Now, at periscope depth, you are still vulnerable to shells landing directly on your position. You are vulnerable to depth charges and uh, the catapult deployed mines, and you are vulnerable to torpedoes launched by enemy destroyers. They can still hit your conning tower and you can explode. It will be a one-shot hit if that actually happens. Your third depth down, we'll call it medium depth, allows the submarine to get away from some of those surface threats. Torpedoes are no longer an issue. You will go directly under torpedoes. You'll go directly under ship's hulls. You can still be detected by some of the surface ships at extreme close ranges, but they've got to be nearly on top of you for that to actually happen. And you also find yourself moving at a much lower speed due to your speed actually reducing as you're diving and just generally being slower at that depth. And the fourth and final depth, which is, let's call it crush depth. This is your safest depth in terms of your ability to avoid surface threats, such as depth charges or the catapult launched mines you're obviously completely safe from torpedoes of all kind i actually don't think there's anything in this event that fires deep water torpedoes but i assume deep water torpedoes would be able to hit a submarine at medium depth but you will be slower again due to the excessive amount of time that it will take to get to that depth and you will move more slowly while under and because you're consuming air at all times and of course you're moving slower you will travel the shortest comparable distance in comparison to any other depth while at that depth. So you're safe there, but you're not going to move a huge distance away from whatever was potentially making you unsafe on the surface. And that's the long and short of how they function. Everything else operates like any other ship in World of Warships. So what are their vulnerabilities? Well, these are actually really straightforward. They burn like Roman candles. Almost every time you take a hit from secondary fire from any of these ships, it will almost always result in a fire. And no, submerging will not put these fires out, so you will have to run your damage control in order to get the fires under control. Obviously, any hits from a main gun from virtually any ship type are going to do significant amounts of damage as well. Torpedoes are pretty much a guaranteed one hit to destroy them, and the destroyers in this particular event have access to depth charges, which is something that isn't present in the main game. These are area effect explosives that are dropped over the back of the ship, just like depth charges in real life. If you get caught in the blast radius of a destroyer launch depth charge, it's 
basically a one hit kill as well. I've been taken out a couple of times by these trying to play funny buggers with the destroyers at relatively close range. You learn very quickly, it's not a great idea. And there are actually two types of depth charge that are present in this. The catapults fire a shell at you that if it directly hits you will set you on fire and do damage, but if it hits the water and misses, will sink down below the waves and will detonate at a random depth, just like a depth charge. These have a much smaller area of effect, they will do very small amounts of damage if they get close. To take significant damage from them, they have to basically impact the hull directly. This just screams to me testing two different types of depth charges within the gameplay mechanics here. But you would have to assume things like uh, hydroacoustic search would reveal the submarines while they are submerged, and I nearly got taken out by a torpedo then, that was really close. That was a torpedo from one of the destroyers. And that's the destruction of the Rasputin and the completion of the event. Unfortunately, we didn't five star this particular match. We missed out on spotting one of the turrets and I didn't actually realize until right as the match was ending. And that right there is the killer whale, which as soon as I'm done with this video, I'm gonna go back to unlocking. But yes, I, as I was saying, I would assume hydroacoustic search would be able to detect the submarines perfectly fine while they are submerged. I assume radar would probably be able to detect the submarines while they're at periscope depth. And I think it would also be safe to assume that most spotting aircraft would be able to detect the submarines at a higher range as well, specifically the ones launched off things like battleships and cruisers, which would be particularly vulnerable to submarines, and it would also increase the importance of actually carrying a good spotting plane consumable. Now obviously I expect that it would only really work against either surface submarines or at periscope depth, but this would give uh, battleships and cruisers another option to deal with submarines if they're worried that one may be in their area. And this isn't including any possibility of adding additional consumables as well. But anyways, overall the event has been a lot of fun. I do like the way the submarines play, I have been enjoying it. And as I said, I'm going to go back and play some more and I'll possibly do a video on the killer whale once I have it unlocked. Uh, yeah, this is what happens when you get caught on the surface. This is the Barracuda, by the way, with the 233mm secondary guns. I was trying to get some fires on the targets, and, well, this one's here is reasonably durable, but three fires and having to pop my uh, damage control almost as soon as the secondary fire started hitting the sub. I do also have to give Wargaming props. The designs of these submarines are beautiful, and I really hope these skins are made available at some point possibly in the next Halloween event, if submarines do actually go into the main game. Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching, and until next time, remember to click that like button, share, and subscribe if you would like to see more, and as always, take care.